everyone. Welcome to a brand new edition of the Triple Trio. I'm joined by the best form analyst in the business and Clint Hutchison, the golden boy, the Hall of Famer in Raymond Chain Dye. Look at everything about Hong Kong racing each and every week right here on the Triple Trio. And Hutch, this week it's very special. It is very special. Gong Hei Fat Choi to everybody out there. It's a big weekend. New Year's Day meeting, Chinese New Year's Day meeting in Hong Kong is one of the biggest days in terms of the crowd. We want the Year of the Dragon to be great. It will be. We've got a lot to get through. Looking forward to chatting with Hugh Bowman later in the card as well about the derby and plenty more. Shane, always a pleasure to see you on this very special edition. Gungi Fa Choi. Even I can say that one, Richard. So you should have no trouble. Um, yeah, it's it's a, it was a great week racing. Um, of course, Helene Express uh, won last week. Very impressive once again. Um, but there was a horse in there I thought went very well. Oh, you're going to tease us who that is. But first, here is the highlights of last week. And Helios Express is front and centre. I think Nimble Nimbus is an interesting one. He could go out at a decent price. He, he's not as good as them, but under the handicap conditions at $12, he can be entertained because it's a favourable map for him. Nimble Nimbus outside all of them. He ran to the top. 5G patch bursting the gap now. He's run to second. Nimble Nimbus clinging on. Nimble Nimbus. Best of the day is actually the penultimate race um, from the last few races I've had a look at. Sunlight power, though. He's had a better run today. Harry saved ground everywhere and sent him home. Sunlight power, too good. Helios Express, a clear top selection for you, Shane. Oh, mile in front. He wins. Helios Express has taken over, though. He's raced a length clear over Helene Feeling. Cheng Cheng Glory. Star Mac runs on through the centre. He'll get into minor money, but the favourite, way too good. Helios Express. Way too good was perfectly described. Helios Express onwards, maybe to the Hong Kong Derby. We'll ch chat to Hugh Bowman uh, shortly. Um, Great weekend, mate. It was a great weekend uh, during the week. Was was good too. But yeah, I mean, he justified the quote by winning. We'll talk more about whether or not mm. he justified that. Uh, well, he justified it, but whether or not he'll be as short going into the main event later, and if he'll see it out. I think there's plenty to discuss out of that race, actually. Well, we better get into discussing that because that's burst out of the gates. Well, as we burst out of the gates, we start with the classic mile with Helios Express, and we'll certainly flesh it out with Huey Bowman when he comes and joins us on the program. Given an absolute gun run here, Hutch. He did. He had the run of the race. The tempo was actually better than I think many thought on the day. The, the, it was strong enough. The takeaways, you know, from me, that final 200 metres of the race was the 70th best at the whole meeting. So I wouldn't say really charged it. The race rated OK. Um, his efficiency in terms of how the race was run was basically 100. So it was perfectly run for Helios. He had the gun run and he did what many expected. And with his rating, he has to be the starting point going towards the derby. But listening to Hugh Bowman, and we'll hear from him a little bit later, I'm interested to see how he feels. He'll go over a little bit further. I'm not completely sold, about 2,000. But he just has shown such a high rating that that class factor is going to take him a long way. Oh, classic mile's going to be perfect, 1,800. He'll run 1,800 on his ear. Derby's another thing, so let's take one race at a time. I'm not disagreeing with you the last 200, Clint, but what happens with horses? They can't run 600 metres. It's impossible. They've got a 400-metre sprint, and if you watch that race, at about the 700 metres, they really quickened on pace. So the sectionals from about the 700 to about the 300 were pretty quick. And that's why he couldn't run a last far section. Or it's just impossible. Horses from back can, but not on pace. Um, I thought Star Mac run very well, and he's the horse outside the winner to take out of the race. He, he's a horse on his way up, and come derby time, you could be looking at the winner there. The flip side of all of that yeah. as well, which we'll discuss a little bit with you, you know, Star Mac, what's his current official rating? It's very low. Um, there was another race during the day with Simple Hedge, of course, and Kaying Generation. That went pretty well. They also went, they went a lot harder, mm. but um, I think they're now proven, and that is a lot more interest out of that race, which we'll touch on later when we go through our Derby rankings. Yeah, let's just hold uh, fire on that race there because we'll, we'll chat about it with uh, Huey Bowman coming up. 
Lucky Swain S is always in the news from our point of view, especially with Shane, but J Mac's going to have a spin. What? It's incredible, isn't it? I mean, J Mac to get the rise is on Voyage Bubble, Romantic Warrior. Now he's on Lucky Swain S. He's not even based in Hong Kong. And he has, Shane, the creme de la creme as far as Hong Kong horses are concerned. What a position to be in. Well, it's good, but it's also bad. He's still got to pay the tax department in Australia when he comes back here because he lives here. If he wasn't living here, he wouldn't have to pay the tax. Well, on that note... So whatever he wins over there, he still gives it to the Australian tax office. It's bloody silly. On that note... Sooner he's over there, better. On that note, Shane, I mean, this is a serious amount of money too. I mean, if he rides these horses... In the next 12 months, it could conceivably be a $2 million decision if he based oh, himself, def- wouldn't it? I mean- definitely. 100%. And yeah. he's going to give it to the Australian tax office. Mm, and he can still come back to Australia and ride the good horses in Australia. I know what I'd be doing and where I would be for money reasons, but if he wants the glory of winning Group 1s to be the greatest of all time in Group 1 races, good on him. Richo, what would you do? Well, I'd take the, uh, you know, the, the lead from Shane. How old were you, Shane, when you were at the top of your game in Australia and you said Hong Kong's going to be home? Were you early 30s? Uh, I, I left 33 and I'd ridden 93 Group 1 winners up to then. I was riding the best yeah. two-year-old and assertive lad, the best three-year-old in Shogun Lodge and the best wait for age horse and tie the knot and I went over there. On another note, I mean, we have, you know, a lot of good sportsmen are based out of Florida or, yeah. or Monaco. You know, they do that for those exact reasons, so... He's got some decisions to make. Huge decisions. But let's talk about, take the the money as an aside. It just shows the respect he has. The fact that, I mean, he banged up his feet big time on Saturday. He'd had the courage to jump on a plane, fly to Hong Kong, still ride. And he is just regarded so highly by the trainers. Well, he is, because he's getting it done. And Shane, you brought up a couple of weeks ago when he's had one or two stashes with Zach it was Wonder Bar and oh, Ka Ying Rising, I think, and there might have been another race. And they were sort of like match races in a way. And look, J Mac came out and top. There's other instances where Zach comes out and top. They're both fantastic riders, but it feels like there's almost a bit of a changing of the guard happening as we speak. Oh, there is. There's a big one. There's no doubt about that. And um, it, it's changing now. Uh, everyone has their time. And Zach's ridden incredible. He's done what no other jockey can do. And he'll keep riding winners and he's going to be leading jockey. There's no risk about that. But the ter- time's turning for J-Mac and, and people want him, which is evident. Like, you know, you got to remember, he got on Romantic Warrior when Teton was riding him and also Zach was riding him, but he still got on him. So that's a good effort. And, and of course, um, he then, uh, Lucky Shai Nass, as you call him, uh, want they won him this. When is it? Two weeks. Yeah. For the fourteen hundred. Yeah. Mm. I mean, he did win on him. He did win that race on him last year. Yeah, he's won a group one before. Him. Yeah, that fourteen hundred. Uh, I think it might be better for Lucky Swainess as well. But is it? Is it that he's just got a little bit more of the youth about him, or I mean, you know, what do you put it down to? I mean, he's obviously he's world class as we know, and he's a Longines champion jockey. J Mac, but what what reason do you put this down for? I know he's had all the success as well. Is it all those factors, Shane? He's a great jockey. Simple as that. So is Zach. But yeah. this season, Zach hasn't ridden as well as he normally does, and it's showing. Although two weeks ago he rode unbelievable, you know, just sensational. That day where he rode Sex Winners, and he, if he gets that back, he'll just keep getting on every horse. But um, um, you know, he's dominated for a long time and, and White had his time. Basil Marcus had his time. Everyone has their time. Yeah, he's been an absolute champion. There's no doubting that. And he will continue to be mm. uh, Zach Purton. But uh, suddenly with Huey Bowman and James McDonald, uh, it is certainly a very interesting jockey's mm. room over in Hong Kong at the moment. Now, J-Mac has been... Um, the, the doctors have assessed him when he got back from Hong Kong. He's not riding uh, tonight in uh, Sydney, not riding tomorrow in Sydney as well. Um, ooh, look away if you're a little uh, queasy. Oh, that is a seriously bruised foot and big toe. Um, needs time to recover, but then he will be back, I could imagine, in about Richo. a week's time. Richo. Talk to me. Um all jockeys ride with injuries, as you know. I yep. did. Everyone does. Sportsmen do. I thought he was actually a little bit weak. 
<laughs> J-Mac. But then I realised he was a Kiwi, and we have this thing called a big heart. Yeah. And obviously that set in last week, and he could keep riding in Hong Kong because of the heart, and he's a Kiwi, mate. Would Aussies have ridden with a foot like that? Oh, no uh, chance. I, I'm, I thought Shane was going to interject and say he needs a pedicure. Yeah. That's, that's where I thought he was going with that. He is the most manicured man that we know is RS Dye. Yeah. Don't worry well, about everything. a million dollars. Everything is trimmed mm. within an inch of its life. Um, <laughs> talk to us about Nimbus. Nimbus. Nimble Nimbus was terrific. I mean, he deserved this, Shane. He's been in really good form. It was a handicap race. Thought there were a couple of hard luck stories in it. Happy together, never got the breaks. It was no fault of the rider. It was just where he drew, and you can see him back on the inside. Look, Andre Zeni is just getting it done. He's getting some opportunities, and he is winning aboard them. I thought, you know, 5G patch was great. Um, but the handicap conditions of this race, straight Aaron's run out of his skin with the top weight, but wasn't completely surprised. I won't be giving up on Happy Together, though. I thought he was terrific. And Counter never got a run in the race either, but Happy Together, if he gets a run, he wins for sure. That's not even debatable, Clint. He would have won for sure. You could see that. Um, he's riding really well, and I've been saying that for weeks now. He rides a winner a meeting. He doesn't get favoured rides, and he's going good. And it's his first season, so he's only going to get better, and next season will be even better, you would think, if he can keep this up. Yeah, it's and he sits on 27 wins for the championship. Huey Bowman with uh, 63. Um, Harry Bentley with the treble over these two meetings. Harry's riding really well. I've been impressed in the last week. He, of course, he had that time on the sidelines, but he's come back swinging. I love this ride from Watch Buddy. It was simple, but the, they, the good ones make the simple things look good. I mean, it was Healthy Healthy was getting a soft lead. He crept up to him on the turn, and then it became a bit of a dogfight late, but he was strong in the finish. Good effort from Harry. The runner-up was terrific. Good result for Hutchie's Honkers there as well with, on both of those. But, um, look, he's riding well. Harry was also very good on the weekend on one of our better plays. And he's another one. There's a, there's a bracket of jockeys that, Shane, don't get the sort of really good rides and Harry's in that mould but they're starting to deliver when they get some opportunities as he did during the week I think they're all riding pretty well myself there's no one that stands out you go geez he's riding bad all of a sudden but uh, no they're going good they're a lot better than what they were three or four years ago Clint there's no risk about that yeah, and I did mention that championship update and also, of course, uh, coming up later on in the show is the Idol, um, Racing's uh, ultimate prize. Most elite. It's the elite of the elite. Racing's the ultimate prize? Yes, I like forget it. The, forget the Cox Plate, forget the Arc de Triomphe. People it, want to win the Idol. It's epic. Uh, Zach Purton on 63 wins. He's 20 ahead of Karis Teton. Huey Bowman sits on 35. He's going to be our special star power guest today. Pierre Ng with 47. We're on the eve of the English Classic Yearling Sales in uh, Sydney. I could imagine there'll be a lot of trainers down there where that's been a very successful hunting ground. It is. Uh, they'll be purchasing up, no doubt. Big weekend for Pierre Ng. We mentioned the Trainers' Championship there. He's got two of his potential stars or all his stars going around. Mugen is one, Ooh, yeah. and Galaxy Patch, and those are two very, very talented horses. So we'll uh, we'll chat about those later. Okay, let's uh, check in with our black bookers. It's Sweet in Defeat. They're off, and Sugar Sugar missed the start by four lengths. In Dublin Star, Sugar Sugar Fast Buck Smart leader. Oversubscribe, lunges at the post, missed. Sugar Sugar, that's a sweet win for Alfie Chad. Our black bookers here in the triple trio is called Sweet in Defeat. Who jumps in the Sid fight? We've had a good week. I think mm. there are a few here well worth noting down. Um, look, Young Champion was a, a fantastic run on his Hong Kong debut. Get J Mac in the saddle for him. Skyheart, oh, what a nightmare uh, watch that was. Uh, there wasn't really much he could do. He drew wide. There wasn't much speed, and he was off the track the whole way. The race didn't rate that well because they went so slow, but, um, you know, he, his run was terrific. He's ready to win a race. And this was a terrific run on Wednesday, Super Eagle. Three wide, no cover the trip on a fast speed. I was surprised he was still not that far away at the finish. But this is the one I like in particular, Shane. Young champion, Illuminus got up and did him on his debut. But, the, you know, I give Ka Ying, uh, Ka Ying, one of the Ka Ying horses there, up on speed. But, gee, young champion, he just seemed to peak on his run late. But he looks a nice prospect. And he's actually also nominated for the Derby, believe it or not. Yeah, well, you think on his overseas form, he's going to be better when he starts to go a little bit further. And, of course, all of John Sizes normally improve after their first run, so you'd think he would. He's a nice horse. That other horse you mentioned, uh, Super Eagle, is it? Super Eagle? Yes. 
Do you know that he's gone up two points for his last six runs this season for four seconds and two thirds? He's so well weighted, that horse. It's unbelievable. Not only that, Clint, he hasn't drawn inside five, I think, his last six placings. The day at Happy Valley he draws a barrier inside, he, he'll just win. He's, he's just got to get the right run, but he keeps drawing wide and he's not going up in the ratings and he keeps running second or third. Yeah. He's very consistent. You bring just up wants a, a barrier. A good point. I'm a fan of, uh, I love the Hong Kong system in its entirety, mm. but if I had one little thing that I'd like to tweak a bit, it's that sort of, you know, there's, the horse is running constantly second or third, just creeping up the ratings and effectively getting penalised for a win sometimes when I don't think they, uh, they really deserve sure. it. So I, I'd like to see them a little more leniently handicapped and penalty free unless you win well not penalty free i think i don't mind a little adjustment but i think in days gone by some of them have been mm. a bit high but that's uh, you know he still hasn't won one yet but he's ready to okay yes. but he hasn't gone up in the ratings as yeah. you were saying he yeah. stayed the same they've kept him the same yeah okay an opportunity for the jockeys to sit up and take notice genius or slaughter and across answering the urgings of shane dyer mannerism coming at him mannerism has got it Daring tactics by Shane Dye. He's got octagonal in full flight on the corner. Bold tactics by Shane Dye are going to pay off and he pinches the chipping door. The Hall of Fame jockey, the golden boy, uh, Dai Singh, has got a chance to have a look at uh, all the rides during the week. Shane, who caught the eye? Alfred Chang, this was a great ride on Wednesday night, sugar and sugar. If it wasn't for the ride, he couldn't win. Gate eight, watch this. Actually, you watch the horse also from gate three, Golden Samurai. If he goes to the fence up here, he wins the race, I believe. But he didn't go to the fence, and he had a chance to. Now, watch here in the blue cap. He's three deep, but the whole time he's looking to get in. This was just a sensational ride. Watch up here. He's looking, 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 and he goes to the fence. And that's what won the race. The other horse, the white white uh, colours, is behind him and he's got to yeah. go round them. And he was unlucky, that horse. If he goes to the fence, he probably wins. Reverse them. And he doesn't leave the fence and he is never going to win the fence. And for a kid to ride like this, it's sensational. And it's just a perfect ride, Clint. It is. And, you know, you've described something there that's really important for people following Hong Kong racing and in particular Happy Valley. And for that matter, racing anywhere. Little things like that make a massive difference in the end, particularly when you're closely handicapped. Just little decisions, saving ground. Um, you know, you, like you said, you flip the script. Golden Samurai gets that run. It could be a different case in point. So, you know, getting your map right and, and what will unfold, Shane, has such a big bearing, particularly at the Valley, more so than Sha Tin, where you've got a little bit more time to compensate. Mm. But it's a huge factor at the Valley, getting oh, your positions big, right. Big, big. It was just an outstanding ride. Gets the three votes. Gets three votes He's for that. Got it. That's He's a beauty. Got it. Well, it ended up perfect. being first versus sixth because the horse mm. ended up coming sixth, the one that covered the ground yeah. that had the chance to get onto that rail. And Shane's been talking about the rail, especially at Happy Valley. He's got one in his house. He's got get to the rail, yeah. ride for luck. He rode It'll it. open oh. up, mm. bang through the inside. I've got to tell you something, boys. Ryan Moore said to me not very long ago, "Will you stop mentioning the rail?" <laughs> these boys realise how good it is. He said, soon I won't be able to get a run-up on the run rail soon, because everyone will want to be there. While they don't want to be there, it's easy for me. Yeah, it's a fair point that uh, Ryan, and he's a big fan of the show, yep. it's a fair fair point that he makes. Uh, Shane's talking everyone into the rail. They can't all get there. No. Who did he give the, uh, the points to in the idol? We've got three there. Well, I gave him three, of course. Uh, Bentley rode three winners over the two meetings and the horse that Clint really liked and uh, Sunlight Power, was it, Clint? Yes, it was. That was just a perfect ride. And he's not easy to ride. He's very difficult to ride, right? And then he come out and rode two perfect races on Wednesday night on Watch... Um, um, watch Buddy. Watch Buddy and something else, yeah. anyway. 18 um, arms. This kid, he's just riding sensational, of course. Angus, is it? Yeah, yeah. It is. Are, 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 are you helping well. him out, Shane uh, Angus? Because he's become a backmarker rider now. It's sort of very Shane Dye esque, you know? He's, he's, he must be watching the show because he's actually hitting a horse now. Right. He's really hitting them. Yeah. Whereas before it was all this, but now he's boom, boom. And uh, he's going really well. And he rated that um, fantastic, um, fantastic, fantastic choice. choice. 
yeah, really well in front. He rates him so well, got away with murder. When he leads, he never goes too fast. He's very good at that. And Lavero, third fence, jumped from an out, outer gate, come straight across third fence, stuck to the fence, went boom, won. And, of course, the other horse um, that he won on, he rode. Rode really well. Yeah. And Karis rode that horse that um, we showed before, Luminous, really yeah. well. Mm. Back on the fence, never left the fence, come through and unfortunately beat your horse who you backed. Oh, but it was only because of the ride that it won. There were other jocks that rode well, of course. Uh, Andrea's just, going really well. I could have given more, but they just stuck in my mind straight and, away. And just on that, Shane, can I ask you a question about Huey Bowman? So Huey's yep. on a dollar thirty favourite, Helios Express, gives it an absolute peach to win, I know the horse was better than the rest of them. Do we, do you, when you're analysing these rides, do you judge the champions a little harsher? Are you expecting that from yeah, you? Yeah, probably. Well, it, it's going to win. He couldn't get beat, that horse, as I said. So, But the good thing is, Yui, is he gives them a chance to win. He doesn't panic out of the gates. He rides them where they should be. He just come across third fence and he said to himself, I worry about the race at the 600 metres. And at the 600 metres, he started to say, right, I've got to get out of here now. They've gone quick and I don't want to get stuck. So he pushed the other way out of the, out of the way and come out three deep. Whereas other jockeys, because it's a dollar thirty, wouldn't go to the fence and would be lock, looking to get off, and that's the way they ride, and that's fair to them. Whereas Orion Moore, he doesn't care whether a dollar ten, he'll be on the fence every race. Yeah. Okay. Just uh, wanting to get into the mind of uh, the Golden Boy. Let's have a look at the leaderboard, uh, Golden. And at the moment, uh, Zach leads Huey by three. With Karras, Teton has been a mover in recent weeks. Yes, he's chipping away, Karras, and Angus it, is uh, going well. Angus is up into double Angus. figures as well. Angus, yeah. it, it wouldn't matter who you talk to in the punting ranks at present, who, yeah. who are computer teams or punters or whatever pros, they'll all tell you that Karras is riding so much better than he was at the start of the season in the last three or four months, and it's really noticeable at present. So, And that, just repeating... It, there is a disclaimer. That is for Hong Kong-based jockeys only. Ryan Moore didn't get points and no. James McDonald's not eligible. Nothing. They're rules set down by the golden boy, not yeah. by us. What he says goes. Of course it does. It's, it's his competition. It's his idol. It's his idol. He can dish it he to whoever he wants. It. Exactly. <laughs> I know. It can't be my idol because have you seen it? Yeah. I would have definitely done a better one than that. <laughs> You're kidding. I reckon I, you've had a glow up, mate, with your little bubble head. <laughs> yeah, I thought, I thought the mullet looked pretty good. Too. I just had so much hair in me. <laughs> Enough of that nonsense. Our star power guest is Huey. Our special star guest is the one and only Hugh Bowman with this incredible record around the world for Group 1s. He's a star jockey calling Hong Kong home now. And Huey, as always, mate, brilliant to see you. It's a special weekend. You're unfortunately sitting in the sidelines, but uh, there's a lot to celebrate for the season you had, mate. How are you? Jason, I'm very well, thank you. Um, obviously, I'd rather be competing with the big meetings ahead, but um, unfortunately, I found myself on the wrong side of the stewards' readings, which is understandable given the circumstances. And um, look, I'll just take it as I can and try and prepare for my return on the 25th of February. Yeah, Hugh, we'll touch on uh, a few of the, the, the suspensions a bit later. Let's celebrate the good things first um, and look back at Helios Express's performance. What did you make of it? I, I thought it was a, exceptional. I mean, yeah, the there was a lot of confidence around the horse out. going into the mile and, the mile you know, he delivered in spades. I'd like to see him relax a bit better uh, as he gets over a little bit further on the derby path, which I think he can do. He's a very sensible horse. And I think I took some confidence out of the way he travelled and, and was able to let down and be in opposition with an authority the other day. So uh, that was exciting. It was uh, I wouldn't say it was unexpected. I mean, he was an odds-on favourite, so you want to see it happen. But it was, a great, it was certainly a great feeling. And what about him up in trip? I mean, uh, Shane was commenting earlier and he'll, he'll jump in after you. I'm sure 1,800 won't be a problem. How about 2,000? Do you, 
If he races in this manner, will he see out 2,000? He, he'll have to relax a bit better, I'd imagine, listening to what you just said. But how do you feel him over the 2,000? Do you think he'll be as strong? Well, I'm not I'm not prepared to judge that until I ride him in the next race. Um, if he comes out next start and he behaves like he did in this race, well, I'd have to say that there'd be doubts. But then again, you come down to uh, field size, uh, the field makeup, and, you know, barrier draws and all these things. But I, 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 I think it'd be premature even go down that path before he runs next start. I think he'll run 2,000, especially with Yui on, because he gets a lot of horses to relax and he's quiet. Barry is a big thing too, where if he can just, he doesn't have to work early if he draws in and he can just go boom and relax straight away, whether it's a three-back defence or whatever. When you draw out a bit, it's a little bit harder. So uh, barriers will be big, but I think he'll run the 2,000. I really do. You know, the thing was he travelled a bit better than you would have liked in that he was a bit stronger than you would have liked, but he was still very powerful through the line. So, you know, I don't think there's any doubt he's got the stamina to do it, particularly against his own age group. So, look, time will tell, but, you know, he's got to keep progressing. But as I said to start with, he's a very sensible horse, and so he, he he's a horse that's going to work with you if given the chance. Yeah, and the big plus with him is... His official rating, Richo, he's, yeah. you know, he's got so much on them in terms of, you know, where he's at. Uh, he's already over 100. And, you know, Hugh, it's looking this year like a lot of the lineup. I was going through the horses that will probably run this year. And, gee, I mean, there's horses in the 70s there that are going to make the race easily, which hasn't been the case so much in right. years gone by. So, you know, there's going to be a, a number of runners that you'll be taking on that are sort of 30 points below in the ratings, which sounds insane. Yeah, I guess so. And I mean, look, at the end of the day, I, I remember speaking on the show about, you know, finding myself on, on one of the top gallopers in Hong Kong. Well, <clears throat> Helios Express could well be that horse. So, you know, re even regardless of this preparation, although it's important at the moment, I think he's got a hell of a future in, in the years to come. And I, I think that's an important thing to think about as well. But look, as I said, he's, he's got ability. He's very sensible. He's in the right hands. and Let's hope he keeps progressing, but to win a Triple Crown in Hong Kong would be extra special, but we're not going to dare to dream that far just yet. We'll just go continue through the process, and he, he started off in fantastic form, as we could see, and there's no reason why he can't continue. The other thing, Richo, is too, and I know Clint and I have brought this up before, you don't have to be a 2,000-metre four-year-old to win the derby. Mm -hmm. There's many milers that win the derby, and that's just a fact, yeah. because they are the best horse. Yeah. Well, if I think back to my time in Australia riding Oaks and Derbies, probably more Oaks fillies. You know, I've won, I've won several Oaks on Milers, um, and when they're against their own age, and in that case, sex, um, you know, they, they don't need to be a genuine two thousand metre horse to win. They just if they've got the ability, uh, they'll overcome the stamina side of things if they relax, and so that's the key with this horse. Yeah, yeah, and we've seen horses in years gone by, like Green Birdie was a 1,200-metre Group 1 horse, but he ran, yeah. I think, fourth in a derby. So yeah. it does happen. And in Australia, we saw the mighty Mahogany. He, <laughs> he, he won two Lightnings, <laughs> if you don't mind, and he uh, won two derbies. Um, G1 Goldmine, put that lens over it. Uh, yeah, over. I think, it, from a look, from he'd be happy with this. I mean, we did run the analytics with Group 1 Goldmine, who uh, are big supporters of the show, and we, thank, and we love their product as well. And when you look at you know, what uh, this guy offers in terms of his pedigree. Well, he's got very strong leadings towards really a 1,600 to 2,200 metre wow. range. So, you know, the cross, uh, the Toronado uh, with the, you know, the uh, the dam side and the fast net rock, there's a lot to say there that yeah, what Hugh said, they're mentioning he was strong through the line that it won't be a problem. Yeah, okay, so where's your rankings now um, from uh, the road to the Hong Kong Derby? He's on the top? No, not yet, because that race on the weekend, it rated well, but it didn't rate on right. the top. There, there was a race on the weekend that rated on my stuff a little bit better, and it was Kaging Generations race, where they went a hunt very, very hard and simple hedge. So just for those who haven't seen this before, this was this is a peak performance from any runner, weight adjusted to the 126. So 
Simple Hedge has actually got to the top now of a Ka Ying generation. Then I've got Helene Feeling and Helios right there. They're all within about a length of each other. But Helios is obviously could go to another level. And um, but the the thing, the interesting part about all of that, Simple Hedge, uh, you know, that was his first go over 2,000 meters as well, and he kept on pretty well off a strong speed. And um, we've got a couple other horses there that have made the list, including Simply Maverick. They got a bit to find, but there's not. There's not one breakout horse, but mm. that'll be interesting for those looking forward. Uh, and Fallon's there down towards the bottom. I had no luck at well, all. Well, yeah, it was an interesting race. Um, he just got a long way back the other day. I thought he ran okay, but um, yeah, you'd ha you'd be you'd be wouldn't be dropping off the winner. Starmac was the interesting one, Shane, in that race, wasn't it? From Helios Express's race. I mean, he's not rated very high, but he hit the line well. Starmac's the one. He's looking for two thousand meters. He relaxes and he's hitting the line. He's the one for the derby okay. well, out Hugh, of all those horses. Well, Huey's not going to change, though. Don't, don't try to talk him <laughs> out of it. No, I'm not. I, I, you wouldn't get off him. You no. wouldn't get off if, him. I mean, no. if I was that, – that, just to note, that's the sort of peak performances yeah. thus far. If you're framing a market, uh, Helios is going to be – you know, he's going to be cliff. But outside of him, if you're looking one for the derby and you said to me, what are you riding today? I'm saying Starmac straight right. away. Okay, uh, we take that uh, with uh, with great interest. Um, Hugh, you just touched on the suspensions at the start. Is there any particular reason? It's just been a little unlucky. Did you have to change your style at all in Hong Kong coming back from Australia? Oh, I don't really. I think it's just got to be more focused, maybe. Um, you know, coming back from injury, my fitness levels, you know, weren't or haven't been what they would be normally, of course, having been so long out of the saddle and being being injured, I couldn't do my natural exercise rate, you know, routines, and you know, came back a, probably a, a week or two early. But my goal was to be hitting peak fitness by the end of January, which I felt as though the last two meetings riding, I was really starting to find that groove, despite the fact I found myself on the rack of the stewards. But um, it's been a bit of a thing throughout my entire career, coming back from time off, um, you know getting the timing wrong and finding myself suspended. It's not just suddenly happened in Hong Kong. It's been a little bit of a pattern throughout my entire career. And you think at my age I'd be a bit more aware of it. But, <laughs> you know, it's something I'm going to have to be very careful of when I do come back because it's been, you know, a really interrupted season for me. Um, and, and, you know, I take full responsibility for that. So I suppose there's a little bit of element of bad luck, you know. I mean, the, 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 you know, on the other side of the coin, there's been some very silly decisions as well. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword. And once you get in that groove of finding yourself in front of the stewards, you know, that a little bit like good momentum, you can sometimes get a bit of bad momentum. And I guess that's where we're at. But look, instead of dwelling on it, I'm really going to try and use this time to keep myself fit and healthy and focused and come back. Um, with my weight as good as I possibly can. Um, and, and, and that comes with being able to train and exercise. So, um, you know, I guess the, the proof will be in the pudding when I do return. Um, you know, I can think about it and look sick and consider it as much as I like. But, the, you know, at the end of the day, when I get out on the, on the track and start competing, I just have to be a little bit more patient, I think. Um, it's easy what Yui does wrong. Okay. So... Yui rides horses back in the field extremely well, and he likes to ride them and give them a chance. So when you do that, you're always going to get runs because the field opens up at the 200 and you're back four or five lengths coming into the race at the right time. So you don't knock a horse down, and Yui doesn't. He just finds runs all the time. But if you remember last April when he went back to Australia to ride and he got suspended, he was third fence on a 2,000-metre race on a favourite, couldn't get out, and at the 200 metres he went sideways and knocked one out to get a run. So what happens with you is when he rides horses closer, fifth, sixth, midfield type of thing, and he's a Yui is a winner, he wants to win every race. So when he rides them closer and the runs aren't opening up like he thinks he does, they will. He creates that run and he pushes out to make that run so he can win a race. And and he's done it for a while, I've noticed, and that's just, just what he does because he wants to win the race, so he forces the run. Now, the funny thing about it is I went back and looked at them all. Not one of those horses won, so he didn't need to push her out. He didn't need to do it. He could have just waited and run his third or fourth and been a bit unlucky. So when you do push out, Yui, 
make sure you win the race so it's worth it. Right? Don't do it when you can't. But that's all it is. It's just a bit more patience and you're going to say, well, I can't get a run here. I've just got to wait, you know, bite the bullet. And, and um, Or if you're really going to win the race, you just push out. And get a run, Huey, you know? I suppose, I mean, the thing is in Hong Kong, I don't know if we see it as much in Australia, but the momentum's the key factor. Have you noticed, you know, when you're out, is it, is it like starting again? Are you feeling like the support's still there? It looks like the support's yeah. still there, but the momentum's a thing apart from your fitness and, and probably just being, you know, really in the zone and finely tuned. Have you, have you felt the support's been really ready there when you come back? I certainly have. There's been one um, <clears throat> foundation for me since I arrived in Hong Kong. I've had a really good support base and it seems to be a continued foundation for me. So, you know, that's important, but you know, I've got the I've got the brain to do it. I mean, I've got the, the profile and I've got the support. But, you know, I need to have myself right and myself fit and myself um, you know, at the end of the day it's a weight issue. And if I get my weight right, uh, everything else will fall into place and like I said before, that's been a common ingredient throughout my whole career. And um yeah, hopefully we can continue on with that. It's not its not a riding bad thing or anything because you're riding extremely well. If you're riding bad, then it's a problem. When you're riding well and you're riding winners, it's not a problem. You, you'll just come back, get the rides, and you'll continue to ride winners. So I don't think you need to change much. The problem when I'm getting suspended. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, that, that's it, that, just that, the that, suspension. A and, and I can't continue doing that. So <clears throat> all the above I'm aware of. That's because you're a winner and you want to win every race. It's as simple as that. It's nothing else. Talking of winners, Romantic Warrior, yes. Huey, um, how do you feel? Yeah, unbelievable. Really well. Uh, it was a nice, probably the quickest run mile trial I've uh, ridden in since I've been in Hong Kong. So that was good. I pulled him out, went through his paces. He, he idled a bit when he got to the front at the 200 metre mark and it um, was good that those opposition horses came near him and just made him concentrate to the line. But he, he felt really good. And what did you say to, to Danny? Hey, listen, he seemed to go really well for me. I don't know. <laughs> I reckon he's been travelling half a length below his best with yeah. McDonald on. I reckon a Bowman uh, addition. Is that what you thought? Um, the thought did cross my mind. I didn't start <laughs> to do a better job, but that was very nice to see on him. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Mate. Right, mate, we better let you go before you cough up a lung there. Yeah. Um, uh, One uh, thing, Richard, I'm oh, sure okay. he would have looked at the fields for Monday, Yui. And you would have had plenty of rides. Is there something there for the listeners that you may have ridden or you would like to have ridden that you think will go well? I like Invincible Sage. I think he's an up-and-coming sprinter. I love him. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how he goes over the 1,200 metres. But I think Alexi will suit him to switch off in the early stages if he gets his reading right. Uh, he, he could develop, you know, if he can get the 1,200 metres done, he, he could develop him to one of the top sprinters in the in Hong Kong next season, I think. So wow. He's one to watch. There you okay. go. He right. ran the 1,200 last season. I think yeah. he had two goes and run two-thirds over it, but didn't With stop tracks. over it. Yeah, but I was up on the pace, travelling like a winner, couldn't finish off. But, you okay. know, he, he's got natural pace, but he, we can't use it. He needs to be relaxed and coming home. There you go. He's up against Galaxy uh, Patch. Um, Huey, always an absolute pleasure to chat to you, mate. Uh, I hope you're well. We look forward to seeing you back in the saddle. Yeah, likewise. Um, thanks for having me on the show. Sorry about the coughing. <laughs> no, we want... Take care, mate. Yeah, get, get well soon, Huey. Get well, Huey. And we want him in the saddle because Damn he is, you know, I love the meetings where he's involved. We want the top riders out there mm. and uh, you can, you know, follow them with confidence when he's on board. So Purton versus but, but Richard, Bowman that's... versus uh, McDonald versus Abdullah the best of the international, especially when Ryan Moore comes into yes. town. It is a leap, Shane. But that's the best thing about Hong Kong. In Australia, the stewards want you out. They give you time and just say, no, you can't ride here, there, there. In Hong Kong, they actually want you riding, so they allow you to go two days here, then three days there, then three days there. So Yui will not miss a big meeting. He can come back and ride the favourite for the derby. Then there's the Group 1 1,400-metre race. He'll come back. So yeah. over the next month, he'll just pick and choose his days. So the public or the owners and the trainers in the big races aren't missing out. Well, as, as long as his lungs are still okay. That's going yeah. to be the first thing. Uh, he just had a little bit of a, an itchy throat. <laughs> a little so. coughing attack. Yeah. Uh, maybe he's just 
admiring you and so much. Look, you took his breath my away. Shirt, yeah, he would do. I like with my lovely Chinese year jacket. I've got to say, I thought. I'd be the star of the show, but Shane's gone out and gone shopping by the look of it. He's wow. bought a new shirt too. It's, I, I, he's going to tell me it's hey, Versace. No, no, no. Let me guess. <laughs> it will be Hugo Boss, correct? I don't know. <laughs> hey, Richard, you don't understand Yui. He doesn't talk much. He's not like me who can keep talking all day and not cough. <laughs> He's got on the show and we've got him talking for once and he's just not used to it. His throat's <laughs> gone dry. Oh, we're going to move to global racing uh, with a little Aussie uh, tint in it uh, in honour of Huey. Let's talk world racing and with a with an emphasis on the world pool. Great news from a Blue Diamond Stakes. One of the great days of racing. Yes. Three huge group ones at Caulfield is now part of the world pool meeting uh, roster as well. So, so much to look forward to there. That's on the 24th of February. And what a day it's going to be because then you can launch in to the Saudi Cup as well. So, um, highlighted there a lot of the Australian meetings. This is the time of the year for the Australian fixtures to to, uh, to shine as well as um, uh, the Middle East as well. And then we start to pivot towards Europe. Yeah, looking forward to it all. And this weekend, actually, there will be some previews going forward to the Blue Diamond. So, you know, check out racing.com in Australia and watch yeah. the races. Um, of course, or uh, on seven as well. You can yep. watch all those races and uh, it'll give you a good leader into what will be featuring on Blue Diamond Day. Yeah, Bold Bastille's the favourite in the Phillies prelude, uh, leading in, coming off a, a small setback and high octane versus his stable mate in Bodyguard uh, is considered the best of the Colts and Geldings from the Snowden stable. So check out all that action, the preludes, into the Blue Diamond. Hey, Russian Emperor is racing, not in a Whirlpool meeting, but going to be racing soon in Qatar again. Yeah, he's a horse that, as we well know, you know, mile and a half as he's going, mile and a quarter plus, and um, it's good to see him go back over. They've trolled him here. I thought he trolled pretty well, Shane. He seems like he's going through his paces nicely, and I like it when horses have travelled to a specific destination and proven successful, and they're going back to have another crack. His last run two weeks ago was really good in the mile, Clint. He hit the line in it. Um, he wasn't expected to win, but he's going all right. And once he gets up to 2,000 metres, he's always a chance. This is him last year in the 2,400 metre race. Ridden by Alberto Sanna, and he was in nearly in tears after this race. He gave him a beautiful ride. Yeah. Just, I think he got in the three-wide trial at the right time, timed to perfection. And, um, yeah, it's a, it's a meeting the jockeys like to do well at in general in Saudi because there's plenty mm, of money on offer. Yeah, so uh, he's going really, really well. Hey, Shane, a quick one. Did you see during the week, um, very elegant, what a champion she was, um, Named, of course, you know, the Caulfield Melbourne Cup. Uh, she won uh, a couple of Chipping Norton Stakes. So the Chipping Norton Stakes, Shane, has now been renamed the Group 1 Very Elegant Stakes, even though your champion, Ty the Knot, won it on four occasions, didn't get the race named after him. Wow. What do you think? I, I, I couldn't care less, you know. <laughs> I, I, I see these jocks have names right, named after them. They, I haven't got one because I tell the truth. <laughs> I don't suck up to anyone. I just say, you know, it is. Maybe you should be a named after you. You got to suck up to everyone like they all do in Aussie. Don't the very worry. elegant don't, didn't suck up to don't, anyone. Don't worry. Yeah, you don't worry about I mean. calling it the very elegant or the chip Norton. The RS die. Yeah, oh, that's, that's what that's we right, need. The Raymond Shane. The Raymond Shane. Right. I, I don't need a race named after me, boys. I, I don't need anything. Trust me. I'm not. I haven't got an ego like that. I'm okay. Well, I find that hard to believe. But yeah. um, <laughs> but you've got an idol <laughs> <laughs> named after you. Who was a better horse, tie the knot or very elegant? Well, tie the knot. Full stop. Tie the knot only had a fault going to Melbourne at Flemington. Um, also, he raced in a lot better, bigger things than very elegant. They were both outstanding. Why are we even trying to compare two horses like that? The knot and Winx's calibre, they were both very, very good horses who had great careers and won many Group 1 races. Oh, the only oh. difference is one come from New Zealand and the other one was Australian. I'll bow to uh, Shane's judgment, but I always felt like when she was racing very elegant, and this is off uh, a little bit, but I never felt like she got the credit that she really deserved. She won so many Group 1s over a variety of distances, and it was great that she got the, the cup, of course, J-Max yep. first, but I don't... She, I, she deserves a Group 1 race named yeah, after her. I just felt that for her Raymond just, Chain you know died. you're doing... You, there's a there's like a beehive and you're or a bear and you're poking it. 
<laughs> You're poking. He won't be poked. Don't worry. He doesn't care. They're both great horses. Like you know, like I, I don't, I don't get into it. So the only time care. I get into a dispute is when you want to say that Winx is the greatest of all time and whatever. Yeah. Well, I'll debate that to his day because Frankel and those horses overseas would beat Winx every day of the week. Now we can have a discussion, right? But as in Australia, there's no comparison to Winx. She's the greatest in Australia. That, that's just a fact, right? And then you get horses like Octagonal and Long Row and Very Elegant and Tie the Knot and, you know, um, the horse you mentioned before, Mahogany and yeah. Naturalism and all those great horses, right, who are very, very, very good and have won multiple Group 1 races, but they're not Winks. He, Simple he, as that. He left out Munamek. He did. That's mm. disappointing by him. Mm. And he left out the one that was uh, unbeaten, the perfect yeah. one in Black Caviar. <laughs> yeah. um, Let's move to find Black some Caviar's winners. Yeah. Well, she's a champion. She was a champion. She was a champion. You're a champion as but well. Different, hey. different. She's a sprinter, not a stayer. I'm talking about stayers. Mate, I'm talking about... I always talk about sprinters. Um, <laughs> let's move to winners. <laughs> <laughs> let's move to winners on Monday, Shane. We're going to find a stack of winners. Let's find a stack of winners on the Monday Chinese New Year Cup. Uh, Kung Hai Fat Choi, let's go. Race number eight, my friend. Not bad from you at all. Uh, the Chinese New Year Cup, yes, it's one of the features. And uh, Mugen is the way. He'll be all the rage. I've got him $1.39 in a 100% market. Who knows what it well, That's my market, 100%. Who knows what it'll be on the tote. He's going to be very short. Oh, th there's lack of depth in a six-runner field as well. Red line looks the danger. Curia run Wonder was better the other day. But this was an off-the-charts good performance. Fast tempo. He sat back. He was up to 1,400 metres, and he blitzed the Mugen, Shane. It was an exhilarating performance, and he is added very high in the ratings off the back of this effort. Um, I had him very high early on in his career. I backed him his first run this season when he was big odds, you know, when he'd come back off two runs last year. But he was one I really penciled in last year. I like this. He's one of my favourite horses this year. He, he's too good for them. Red Lion could get a very soft lead unless Courier Wonder decides. Like, you're super, well, super wealthy, Paul, so, you, you know, they'll be trying to give him a sit, but he might. A running Glory's no hope to lead. Duke Y normally doesn't. So where's the pace? You've got Red Line and Courier Wonder. So Red Line could just take it up. And Moogle, when it, when he gets out, he'll take his time. He, he'll, he'll, with 115 on his back and these horses giving him 20 pounds, cool. he's just, he, he, he's just going to win. Yeah, and the little tricky part will be the map because he will be on the back of the speed. I think Zach probably leads and... You'll see uh, Courier Wonder sit outside him, but it'll just be waiting mm. for the gap. But gee, a couple of them aren't in the best of form, so you can sort of wait and then just hopefully waiting, get off. Waiting heels. in that acceleration. But he's, a, he's a really exciting horse. I mean, we had Pierre take Taj Dragon up, never throw at the stumps, and we talk about Galaxy Patch, but this guy. He is another rising star in Hong Kong ranks, and uh, I'm expecting him Could, to, to win nice. Just, just what you said there. When you've got one one five pounds on your back, you can get held up and really quicken. Yeah. When you've got 135 pounds, it takes longer. So even if he's behind them, held up, and it's only a six-horse field, it's not going to matter. As soon as he gets that split, he's just going to go boom. And you've seen him do it three times now, right? And the day he got beat wasn't technically um, the horse's fault. It was because of the way the race was run, and he was running into two very, very good horses, and he still run well and run third. He, he's a big watch for the future, that horse, I believe. Looking forward to that one. Uh, small field, bigger field for race number nine. The good betting race here. Sweet Encounter has Zach Purton on board. What are you thinking? This is the red packet handicap. Um, yes, um, some lycee hopefully we can get after this race. Look, it's a very competitive race. I found this tough. I ended up with California Voce back to Shartin, I think, is a key plus. And I think uh, the miles is right sort of distance range. Silver Up is going well. Sweet Encounter's in winning form, but more weight. Holy Ma Lake maps well. Rises in grey, drops a lot in weight. So it's, a, it's an interesting affair. I mean, Silver Up, Shane's going the right way. We saw him in the air compete here, and they've got to be in the mix again. It's a tricky map for a couple, though. Yeah, um, it is the A track, so it doesn't matter if you're covering ground, as we know, normally. Um, I think Silver Up gets his chance, Clint, with 115 on his back. 
Um, I know he has, he's lightly raced. What's he had? Three runs in Hong Kong, I think. Yep. Yes. Let me see. And they've all been good. Like, he's placed his last two runs, and I think the mile's really going to suit him. I think he gets his chance in Sweet Encounter. Well, he's improved this season to last season, and he's racing well. And uh, I know he's got 131 pounds, but last start he more or less carried that too, I think. Um, he carried 135 pounds last start, and it's a similar race probably. Um, so he's going to be very hard to beat. But there's a lot of place chances in this race and a lot of horses going all right, like the here, uh, Master of Fortune, of course, Holy Lake, as you said. There's there's a few there. And Powerful Wings isn't the worst. He had no luck the other day for um, the new, uh, Ben, the new judge. New jock in town. Yeah, but Benny Thompson. I've probably got silver up on top in that race, Clint. Shane, just quickly before we go to the next one, what do you think of the error over the mile? I'm not sure. I think he kept on okay last start. I had some doubts about him seeing out a strong 14, and then last run sort of swung me around. But now he goes to a mile. What do you think of him there? Um, he's got gate 12, so he'll be midfield. He might actually race a little bit. Cl- it all depends. He can race midfieldish. Um, I actually thought he had his chance the other day, and yeah. I thought he should have finished off the race a little bit better. He got a good run in the race. I know Storm Ride is a very good horse, and he quickened at the right time to win the race. Um, but if you have a look at that race, the other horse uh, who we're talking about, Silver Up, I think he was in the same race, if I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah, was a length off him. He run. was a better run in the race. Right. And that's why I've got him on top, because last start he was a better run. And also... He meets him better at the weights this time for being a better run. Race number 10, 1,200 metres here. Now, Huey Bowman uh, gave us a strong push for Invincible Sage, but in his way is Galaxy Patch. I'll tell you, this is a really... Yeah, I know I've got Galaxy Patch. I'm not going to get him any shorter than this, and the market may well have him shorter because he's been running time and he's been impressive visually and putting up margins, but it, uh, that's as short as I'm going to have him, and he'll probably be short on the tote. Flying Ace is racing particularly well. He was great in the slowly run race. Won by Victor, the winner recently. And here's one that at a price that can run well. Majestic Knight. I got him $16. I'm hoping I can have something small on him. But uh, this was Galaxy Pat Shane. We talked about Pierre. We talked about this horse. He ran better time than this uh, Lucky Swainess on international HKIR Day. And, um, you know, he continues to impress Gummy Gummy. Didn't win at his next start, the runner-up here, but he's raced well since. But he, too, looks a very exciting prospect as we took a look at Flying Ace. Well, Flying Ace, this is ideal for him, this race. Uh, 1,200 metres, sit back, come down the outside, he'll run well. But you know what I've thought about Galaxy Patch. He's another horse I've been wrapping for a while. He's going to be probably midfield. He can sit wide on him. He doesn't need to go in on him because it's the A track and he'll just come down the outside. Now, Clint, I'm sure you would have seen it, but the viewers may not have. He, since his last run, he's had a trial and his trial was absolutely sensational. And I think he ran a 1998 that day, wow. which is unheard of. Hard help. He has not gone backwards. He's gone forward. Uh, Lucky Encounter ran well in that previous race. And, of course, he meets the other horse, I think, uh, what is it, 10 pounds better. So he's not the worst. But there's a few chances in there, like Yui mentioned, Invisible Stage. Flying Ace will get back and run on. Uh, Packing Treadmill's coming back in um, um, class. Thought he was disappointing um, the other day, packing treadmill, but he didn't get yes, the right he was. run. He didn't get the right run from the gate. No. It wasn't one of her better rides, I thought, but you know, it, it's not the worst. Um, but they should go along. We are here, I'll go forward and with no with the kid on. Mind you, he never goes fast, Angus. That's the thing. But outside that, no, I think Galaxy Patch wins again, Clint. It, I really do. It was the standout performance of that HKIR outside the Group 1s. Yeah. People were all talking about Galaxy Patch. He got yep. 10 as a penalty for that. We which, carried more weight and ran better time. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. Deserves every bit of the, of the exactly. 10. So you can imagine he will be winning part of... Uh, there'll be many that will be rolling in some all-ups. Yeah, they, he'll be short. But, I mean, the little always a little quick. I mean, he does get back a little bit. So you, you need an element of luck. And there's some, there's some good enough horses in the race that if you... If you get held up at the wrong time, it uh, you know they could they could run well. Like I said, I'm I thought uh, in race ten, I think Majestic Knight is the one that the market will miss, yep. and I'm hoping that he's left alone up on speed and he'll run a big race. Okay, we will get to the lucky last, and as always, super competitive, uh, good betting races. Wow, what a race this is! Yeah. This last race of the day, honestly, there is I, I've got more than half the field 
within a length and a half of each other. Um, a really, really interesting affair. And in addition to that, weight swings. I mean, Zach Purton appears to have chosen Magnificent Nine over Storm Rider, who looks a really nice horse and would have been a tough decision. And I have them rating nearly identically, uh, notwithstanding that uh, Storm Rider's got a little bit more weight to carry. Um, this was a good run, though, Shane. Second up, over 1,200 by Magnificent Nine, and now he gets to 1,400, and Zach looks like he's stuck with this one. Um, yeah, possibly. He, he won over 1,300 at Newcastle in Australia. He's never raced 1,400, but the way he raced there, you'd think he would eat up 1,400. Um, of course, he improved first run to second up, but his first up run was still good. He only got beat two lengths. He's a chance. I've got Storm Rider on top here. I think with the kid on the weight off his back, he's going to come out. He could sit outside E-Legend, who's going to lead. And if he does, he's going to give a big sight. But I totally agree with you, Clint, and what you said. There's a lot of nice horses in this race. Um, even Calm is a nice horse. Blue Marlins won three this season. Yeah. Tottenham Hatch is racing well. Simba, I made him a horse last start to watch, and I said he could go a lot better, and he did. He ran fourth. It was a big run. Uh, he's got gate 13. He'll get back and run on. So there's plenty of nice horses there to watch in this race, but I've got Storm Rider, who I think will start favourite uh, on top. Well, we'll upgrade the performance that we showed there. Magnificent Nine was uh, the... Up and in was a good spot that day, so mm. it wasn't easy to come wider and make ground. I'm with Shane. I mean, Storm Rider, in terms of him being a good chance, um, I mean, when we see Zach get off one or, you know, have one on two horses and he sides, goes with one, mm. generally the market early on anyway um, can suggest that Storm Rider, you might, you know, you know, is no Zach Purton so on board, so you usually get a slightly better price than what you should. Yeah. But, hey, but the good thing with Storm Rider is he won last start and he hasn't been penalised for that win because of the kid. Yes. And he's not hard to ride. It's 1,400, so he can, it's not a 1,200 where he's got a bustle. It's 1,400. He's got an outside gate, which is good. He doesn't have to bustle too hard. He can come across and just sit outside of, you would think, E-Legend, who would lead. There will you know, be like... There will be, That's what you would think. And there, he's, he's not penalised for the win, Clint. There, there, well, that was good about that performance. And Zach said it after the race. They went pretty quick in that race. He absorbed the tempo and kicked off it. So he's a nice horse and he's in on the same conditions. He's a great chance in the race. But, you know, you've got to get involved with the, the site because we'll have a Ooh. couple of plays in that race, Richo. There's no doubt about it. It Hutchies, is competitive. Hutcheesehonkers.com. It's as simple as that. Uh, Analyse. The, you can analyse his tips for each and every race and also, also yep. give you betting plans throughout. Every now, race priced too. Priced as well. Yes. Your top, your best, best bets. Bet. Gee, we covered some ground today and we're going to cover more now. I've got a couple Good. of bets early on the card, which we have made SIDS in previous programs and... I can tell you that my best will be Patch of Theta. It is a good race and there is a couple of very nice chances in it. And I might add one more to that particular list in the Quinella as well on the day. Um, but I've got Easy Snip in the Quinella along with Master Mastermind who was also a Sid for us recently. But I think Patch of Theta can win. That's race three, number three. Okay, can I push you for another one? You can push me for another Please one. Please do. Only because it's you. Talk and to I'm it. going to race seven. I think Ka Ying Rising gets his opportunity. He'll be very thankful, Ka Ying Rising. No Wunderbar in this race. <laughs> and uh, we can have a Cornella with uh, Super Fortune. And uh, I'm also going to throw in the six. Armor, Armor War Eagle, which is a, a little bit of a mouthful. But, uh, mm. yeah, there we have it. So okay. good luck there. I like that. You pause that for a dramatic effect. Talking about pausing for dramatic effect, the king of it. Raymond Shane, the golden boy, uh, give us your best bet. Clint's the one to follow. All his keep winning, mate. He's the genius at this, not me. Well, I haven't um, noticed that, but this is your um, chance. That's all right. Oh, Moogle. No, you can't put Moogle up there, boys, but that's okay. He's going to win. He's going to be a dollar twenty. We want to get your confidence he up. He might be a dollar ten, actually, that also. He'll be a dollar twenty, I'd say. Okay. I'd be surprised if he's not. Right, yeah. We'll um, find us something else then. One for some, a little bit more. Race four, number two. Super uh, Goldie. This run well the other day. He ran 31 first up. 
Um, there's not many chances in the race. I know the top he's going to run well, run, run timing. He'll come across and might lead from an outside gate. and could be hard to run down, but he's hit the line well in his two runs and the A track should suit him. So I'll go him. The day of shorties, boys. It's going to be a day of shorties. There will be there will be a there's few There's some value on the card. Don't Multis. worry. There's a couple there that will run well. I've found a couple in other races. And keep in mind, I am, I'm worried sick about our man, the golden boy, because... It is Chinese New Year Day. It's all about the racing, but the Super Bowl's no. on leading into no. it. I, I, he won't sleep for a 48-hour period. Yeah, he's a That's... big Mahomes fan too. Oh, Mahomes, <laughs> don't talk to me about Mahomes. He's probably, <laughs> he's probably the greatest sportsman ever in history of this earth or whatever, right. what he can do. He can do anything. And I tipped him even before he uh, oh, was – uh, when you, he started with – with, no, on, of course not. It's McCombs. Yeah. But I knew about him just like Tiger I knew as an amateur. I backed Tiger at $18 when he won the Masters, right? right? First time because of how good he was at school. McCombs is the same. Right. Um, mate, I don't care about the races. I'll be there with the TV, the Super Bowl, and I will not be um, moving and go Kansas City. The best player versus a champion team. And, Shane, in your yep. case, it's worth noting that there is no iron team but there's five eyes in individual brilliance. And that's what I think yeah. of you. <laughs> I've always said, give me, a, give me a superstar ahead of a great team or whatever any day of the week. I'd take it every day. There you go. God love you. Good luck to the Chiefs <laughs> and happy punting on Monday as Good well, Golden Boy. Joy.